Hey everybody, it's Al here, and we're going to talk a little politics today. Before I start, I just want to wish everybody, hope you all had a Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, um, Happy Kwanzaa, I think that's happening now, whatever holiday you happen to you happen to celebrate, I hope you had a good one, I hope you enjoyed the time with the family, friends, whoever you spend it with. If you don't happen to celebrate anything this time of year, well, I hope you've had a lovely week. I personally, I took a little time off from making videos and uploading just to kind of recharge. I'm still new to this YouTube thing. It's still a little bit of work for me. And I also stepped away from news for a little bit. I needed a couple of days just to not worry about it. But getting back into it, we're going to talk a little politics today. And today, we're going to talk about something that hit over the time I took off. And we're going to talk a little bit about Jan Uger and that whole debacle with him and the Justice Democrats. Like I said, today we're going to talk a little bit about Cenk Uger and the fallout with him and the Justice Democrats. Now, anybody that recently has sat down and talked politics with me in my personal life knows that I'm in favor of the policies the Justice Democrats stand for and push for and that are on their platform. All right? Totally in favor of that. And Cenk Uger, along with... Kyle Kalinske and a few other people helped found the Justice Democrats, their founding members. They were on the board. Notice I said when they were on the board. That's because they're not on the board anymore. And here's why some of the founding members are no longer on the board of the Justice Democrats. Over the holidays, some blog posts showed up. Some blog posts that Jenk had written something like 20 years ago. And Jenk has admitted to writing these blog posts. He also said that he deleted them something like 10 years ago because they no longer fit who he was as a human being. He'd grown as a person. His ideas had changed. His views had changed on things. Like happens to most of us as we get older. I know my views now are different than when what they were when I was younger. So without further ado, um, I'm going to bring you guys to a clip where you can see the blog post for yourselves. And it will be Kyle Kalinske from Secular Talk reading the blog post. And then we'll come back and I'll tell you what I think about this blog post. I live in Miami now. There are, there are an incredible amount of outrageously hot women here. In fact, there are more beautiful women here than any other city I have ever seen. The only problem is that after seeing these girls every day and not being able to have sex with them, after a while you begin to lose your mind. Don't get me wrong, I hook up a decent amount, defined as at least make out with a new girl every six to eight weeks, and have sex with a steady girl at least once a week. But it seems there is a sea of tits here and I'm drinking in tiny droplets. I want to dive into the whole goddamn ocean. The waves keep pounding at you every night on South Beach, and the more luscious the surf and the more dry you are, the more insanity sets in. On Friday night, I talked to approximately 11 different women at a new club on the beach. Most of them were unfairly beautiful, and I must admit I was fairly charming. Some even indicated I was cute, but alas, no results. The madness grows. There are two problems, which I will get into uh, greater detail on later, but for now, suffice to say... There are one, too many semi-professional whores in Miami. Two, the genes that God gave women. One, in other places in the U.S., when I tell girls that I quit law to become a talk show host, they get excited because it indicates I might actually be an interesting person that does ha that has done something unusual and hence cool uh, thing with his life. In Miami, it is seen as a clear decrease in earning potential and is heavily frowned upon. I have never seen girls get so turned off as when I tell a Miami girl... I no longer practice law. This reckoning, this reaction is sickening in its depraved, whorish blatantness. 
This happened again on Friday night when I told what seemed uh, to a sweet fifth, I think it's supposed to say, what seemed to be a sweet fifth grade teacher my story. She lost all interest, quickly lost her sweet smile, and literally switched seats so as not to sit next to the man that threw away such good future earning uh, potential. Number two, obviously, the genes of women are flawed. They are poorly designed creatures who do not want to have sex nearly as often as needed for the human race to get along peaceably and fruitfully. Okay, so there you have it, Jenks' own words, and this is the blog he wrote that is getting the most attention out of any of it. Apparently there might be a couple more, but this is the one that everybody's talking about. And they're talking about it because of the way he talks about women here. And I'll be honest with you, I don't like the way he talked about women in this. But again, he was in his mid-twenties, he said something stupid. And nothing he's done in recent years, and I've been following the Young Turks for uh, probably close to five, three to five years now, somewhere in that area. Nothing he's done in that time has shown he still holds any of these beliefs. So on that, I'm willing to say, yeah, Jank, you said something stupid. But you apologized for it. You know, as long as you don't start showing you still have these beliefs, fine. You didn't do anything non-consensual with women. You know, nobody's come out saying Jank, you know, did anything. So that's not, that's not a deal. Nothing was non-consensual. You know, everything was done speaking in these blog posts blog posts with consent and that's an important thing here that's an important distinction between him and somebody like Harvey Weinstein or Roy Moore who was going after underage women or in Weinstein's case where there were sexual assault allegations there's none of that on Jank it's just he was young he said something stupid he doesn't think that anymore it doesn't um, resonate with who he is anymore so on that, I'm again. I'm gonna say, Jank, you said something stupid when you were younger. We've all done that. As long as you are of the right opinion now, and you don't still feel this way, you know what? As far as I'm concerned, subject over. Subject over. Um, and of course, the part of it that gets the most attention is when he talks about. Uh, women's genes being flawed, which again is really freaking stupid to say. And at that point in Jenks' life, obviously he was young, he was horny, and when it came to women, social interactions, he was obviously pretty stupid. But it seems like he's fixed that. So he shouldn't have said it in the first place, but he's apologized. He's correct, you know, uh, I, I don't like the term, but he's corrected his behavior. He's not doing it anymore. There's nothing showing he still feels this way. So as far as Jank goes, slap on the wrist, I'll give him a pass. Now don't get me wrong, of course that pass is predicated on the belief that he doesn't do this again. If he starts showing he still has these kind of misogynist beliefs, well then it's a whole nother ball game. But again, he hasn't. So it's not an issue with me. Now, where I do take issue is this, what's his name, David Collar? I might be saying his name wrong. But there were also some blog posts from him from something like 12 years ago. And given in these blog posts, he's asking teenagers about their sex lives. That is creepy. But again, according to that blog post, he might have been traveling with Jank. But Jank was in a gas station. He was out on the street talking to the girls. Jank wasn't even there. Jank had nothing to do with this conversation. And so, yeah, I can totally understand this David Collar being kicked off. That I get. Underage girls, that's creepy. That's no good. There's 
there's no coming back from that. And that's one of my issues with Roy Moore again. He was chasing underage girls. Uh, he committed sexual assault against him. There's no coming back from that. You shouldn't hold a public office. You shouldn't be involved in that kind of thing at that point. So David Culler, yeah, I got no problem with him being gone. Now, just to make sure that you get this in full context, I again, we're going to flip to a clip of somebody reading that blog post to you. This is going to be Tech Review US, or excuse me, Review Tech USA. I want to make sure I get it right. But he's the only one I found talking about this particular blog post. So I'll let him read it to you. And then we'll come back and I'll give you kind of my final thoughts on this whole matter. In one small Pennsylvania town, we stopped for gas, and while Jenk filled up, I went to talk to these three girls who were walking down the road nearby. Turns out they were three teenage girls, whores in training, literally looking for boys to pick them up. Jenk soon joined me, and we discovered these three little spoiled brat bitch young American girls on their way to becoming abused porn actresses or dispensable property in a New York City prostitution ring. Jesus Christ. The girls live in a small town nearby and were in this town visiting the grandma of one of them. They were around 14 to 16 and in a few more years will be pretty damn good looking but not great. They were bitching about how they hate their parents and how their parents don't let them do anything. They were trying to get these 18 year old guys who were driving past them in a red to stop so they could hook up. I asked, I think before Sank came, you keep in mind, Jake was in the gas station, he wasn't there, if these girls have ever had sex. By their reactions, I was pretty sure two of them did, and the youngest of the three, maybe not. These girls were nothing but trouble waiting to happen. American parents in the big city dream of raising kids in the safe tranquility of small town America, but these places are just as treacherous because there is nothing to do but get drunk and have irresponsible sex at a young age. So like I said, this one was pretty creepy. You're talking about underage kids. That's not good. So I got no problem with the Justice Democrats booting him based on what they found. But again, with Jank, it just doesn't make sense to me. And my final thoughts on it, this smells a whole lot like some kind of political hit job. Now, I don't know who went out and found these blog posts, but somebody was digging, and they were digging for anything they could find. I mean, 20 years, you got to go back 20 years for somebody who didn't do anything illegal. They said something stupid, but who in their life has never said anything stupid? I can't think of a single person. I know I've said stupid stuff. I know everybody I know, I, everybody I've ever known has said stupid stuff. And hopefully we all realize we said something stupid. We learn from it. We make sure that... We don't say anything stupid again, and we move on with our lives. So that's what Jenk seems to have done. But again, I it's it smells like some kind of political hit job, and I don't know where it would come from. There's a lot of possibilities. It, you know, it could be somebody trying to do a hostile takeover of the Justice Democrats. It could be corporate Democrats trying to uh, trying to handicap them as much as possible. Could be conservatives who don't like what they stand for or don't like the fact that uh, the Young Turks pretty relentlessly go after Donald Trump and Roy Moore and the like. It could be somebody who maybe doesn't like that the Young Turks also go after people like Harvey Weinstein, people who say they're on the left but have done these horrible things and committed sexual assaults. So, I don't know, but it smells pretty fishy to me like there's somebody gunning for him. I don't know who, but it's not like this is even the, you know, it's not like this is, it's been that long since this happened to anybody else. This just happened a few weeks ago to Sam Cedar, uh, the Cernovich guy or whatever his name is dug up an old tweet where Sam was being, ser uh, I'm not going to say the word right, but it was satire. He made a joke about people who were defending Harvey Weinstein. So, and it temporarily worked. It got Sam Cedar fired for a couple of weeks 
from MSNBC. He's an MSNBC contributor, and he goes on there and talks politics occasionally. And Cernovich temporarily got him fired. So this isn't the last time there's been a political hit job, or sorry, it probably ha is the most recent political hit job out there, but it's been happening recently, so I don't know. It all smells. It all smells. All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening to me ramble about this, to about this topic today and about Jank Uger and the Justice Democrats. All the videos I referenced will be in the description box below, so you can click on them and get them in their full context. I highly suggest you do that. Don't take my word for it. Don't take their word for anything. Do your own research. That's what I always push. This is just my, this is just the opinion of one guy. And hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys Wednesday for some more video games. And I'm Al. See you next time.